We've made it to mum's place, just survived its first drive actually pretty well. Loving the new trailer. D, what are you doing? D's here. D loves me. What are you doing, hey? What are you doing? Gotta clean the garage up, chuck her away, go fishing tomorrow, and then go to work. Mum's got a heap of fishing gear she got off a guy that died in one of her houses. So if you want some fishing gear, I think she's chucking it all on Gumtree for 50 bucks. So yeah, just gonna clean the garage, chuck her in, and then you can all join us on day four of the build. The boat would be completely finished by now if we didn't muck around with all the hatches and me make it so complicated, but I kind of want to set it up for the next couple of years, so that's why we're doing it right the first time. I don't want anything up above the deck, so that's why we're, we're doing all this, recessing everything in, keeping it all a flat deck, kind of like the raft feel to the new boat. See you on day four. Morning, morning, morning. We have got an hour and a half to kill before I have to leave for work, but, and then I probably won't be up till mum's place till next week, so just gonna try and clean up as much glue as I can out from yesterday putting in the rails with the chisel found a chisel in mum's garage garage so we're just gonna chisel out as much as the glue as we can so next week we can come back and just start sanding and then start filling all the gaps so i'll show you what we're doing i've already done one box so this is what it should look like i cleaned up all the glue from all the edges and this is what we're cleaning up so all the excess foaming glue that comes out we have to just get in there and just rip it out. It takes, it takes a little bit of oomph. Just slide the chisel along underneath and just peel it away from, there we go. There we go. And then go this way. And then just peel that away like that. We'll give that a sand next week and then um, start filling all the gaps. So you'll see like gaps like this, that'll need to be sanded just so it sits a bit more flush. And then you use the epoxy, the same stuff you use on the, go the joiners. So then we'll mix up a couple of batches and then we'll go through and fill all the gaps with the epoxy. And then re-sander, we also have to fill in all the holes as well. Next time will be a lot of sanding and epoxying. I also want to neaten up in here as well. So I've got to sand and neaten up all the, all the corners in there. So the job this morning is to clean up all the glue and hopefully get it ready just to start sanding and epoxying next week because I'll be back up here Monday next week. Let's get it done. Welcome to day four of the build of Pipe Dream 2.0. First work session of mum's place. We've just got a massive day of cleaning up. We've got to clean up all these edges, um, get rid of all the glue from all these places. The, the next step after cleaning it up and epoxying all the holes and then re-cleaning it up is going to be painting the waterproofing over the whole lot. So you kind of want to make it look, well, you don't have to, but I want to make it look as big and spam and beautiful when the epoxy goes down. So it's got a really nice finish it to it. So it's pretty much going to be one or two days of uh, cleaning and epoxying and then cleaning again. So this should be fun. Like that looks horrible. That all has to be cleaned up. Bought a heap of new brushes and mixing cups for the epoxy. Got some new, more epoxy because we were almost out of the last one. This one's Slow Hardener West System Epoxy Resin. 206 and 105. Apparently it's the Ducks Nuts. Different sanders in here. Stole this from Dad's place. What do we got? So I got this corner sander. I got some drills and I got some new pads for that. So we'll put that on. We'll go nuts with that, sanding all the corners. And then, yeah, these are the mixing cups I bought. I bought the bigger ones for when I paint it. I'll mix up a bigger batch at a time. And I got the smaller ones for when I'm doing the coving on the corners. And then I bought this as well, just in case. It's a little filing sander. Um, probably just gonna see. It's probably a bit too coarse. I might have to try and find a a um, smoother finish to it. But I was just gonna go through all, all these things with the sander and neaten all that up. So I'll show you as I go, plenty to tidy up. Then the next step is then epoxying all these holes and then sanding them all back. So I got heaps because we didn't use stainless steel screws, we removed them all. So I've got the whole bottom, all the sides. I've got to finish off the back here, I've got to cove all this. Um, and then cove all this on as well. And then we'll neaten up that with a sander. Yeah. And then I've got to neaten up all these two ready to paint. So when the epoxy goes on, looks all lovely. So that's pretty much it for the day. I'll probably sand, sand and neaten it all up today and then tomorrow morning. 
Uh, I've got a few hours to kill, so I'll probably start the epoxy then and then just start coving. But we should be in for a good day. It's quite fun working on your boat. Let's get into it. Well, we just finished up the first front three hatches. I'll show you a look. We cleaned up all the glue, as much glue as we could from up underneath there, just so that the resin sits on there nicely and makes it all waterproof. I'll show you all the glue that we pulled out. So all this sort of stuff was underneath, up underneath. It foams out the bottom, so I tried to remove as much of that as possible. Um, did that with the chisel. Then I used all this, this little tool here, a uh, little corner sand up. That works amazingly getting up in all those spaces and just tidied up the um, all the coving so as much as I could. So now I'm gonna go over and re-cove a lot of this, get that all neat and then I'll do, and then I'll sand it back one last time and then she'll be ready to paint on the inside. So I'll neaten up all the corners, make sure all the coving's packed in, it all looks nice and neat. So down there, along there, all look nice and neat. You can't hide thing, once the paint's on, you can't hide any blemishes, so you've got to get rid of them now. So this is why I'm going to take my time doing this. So I've done the first three hatches. Now I've got to go through and tidy up everything else. Fun day in the office. I'm going to keep going. Right, all the glue is removed. Uh, we still have to vacuum it out, but we've got all the glue out from underneath all the ledges and from all the corners. So we're ready to start epoxying on the inside. So we're going to start epoxying all these corners, making them all look really neat. I've got to find some type of cone thing to help with that. Bit nervous about mixing the epoxy by myself for the first time. Freaking out that Jamie's not here, but if I can do it, anyone can do it. So we've got all the glue out. Uh, I'm just removing all the corners, so you can see like there's an extra, oh, that's not too bad that one. Where's a big corner? Down here. So you can see like we've got a big corner overhanging just here. I'm just removing all those corners and getting them all flush and looking nice. Just using one of these things and then I'll epoxy the inside so the corners are looking all neat. But just removing the tips of them so that they match up flush. So there's one there too that'll need to be done. So I'm just going around removing them with this thing. So I'll just doing it roughly, just getting rid of the, just getting rid of the bulk of it at the moment, and then I'll come back through with a sander and eating them all up. The next job is to start epoxying. We're gonna cove all the insides, get that looking neat, and then we're gonna fill in all these gaps, and then we're gonna sand them all back and make it all look nice and neat for when when we start to epoxy. I still need to clean up all these ones. Some of the things didn't match up perfectly, so you gotta put the epoxy in there and then we'll sand it all back and that'll make it look flush for when it's all painted it'll all just look like it was done perfectly the first time tricks of the trade so we'll keep getting into it right it is now the end of day four. Oh, well I don't know if it's the end yet I might work on it tonight depending on how I'm feeling I didn't get much sleep last night so we'd like to go to bed early it's been an interesting day for the first session working on it on my own I got it all cleaned up and then I started I haven't done that section so I've nearly done all of this this run here. I've just been, I've done like the, the rails all along this one. So all along here, I filled in some of the gaps in the corners. Um, they'll probably have to be touched up though because some of them look like they've sunk or uh, we'll have to touch up a few things in the corners. Gonna try and get as much epoxying done. There's just heaps to do though. There's literally heaps and heaps to do. There's just so many gaps that I need to fill and plenty to do. It's taking longer than I thought and mum being a distraction with banana cake and cup of teas all day. So guys, I'll show you after my next progress. Guys, welcome back to day six of the new boat build, Pipe Dream 2.0. I still have just been going over the boat and looking for any gaps that wasn't filled last time. So there's still a few gaps that I have to epoxy in a few corners. There's um up underneath here. I don't know if you, yeah, there's a few gaps underneath these things. I'll probably fill them with epox uh, with the coving stuff. 
just because it's going to be easier than trying to shove resin up there with the paintbrush to get it waterproof. Got to fill all those gaps underneath there. I missed one, one coving thing there. So I'm going to do that and I'll probably have a bit more of a go at this because that's shocking. That's what I managed to do last time was epoxy all the nail holes, the screw holes. I uh, just shoved as much on there as I could because I didn't want to have to do it a second time. So I've done all that, did it all on the front. Did the sides, there's still a gap down here that needs to be filled. Obviously I missed that. I started it and I ran out of epoxy, so I've got to fill that gap. Bunch of epoxying this morning. Did all the screw holes at the front. I think maybe one or two more goes at epoxy just to get the gaps all done on the top and the sides. And then once that's done, then it's straight into the sanding. Mum's got one of these bad boys. So I'll probably put some 80 grit sandpaper on there and go over all of it just to remove all the heads off it. You don't have to go too smooth on the bottom because that's going to have fiberglass over the top of it. But I still have to neaten up all this. Made a bit of a mistake on the back here. We cut this one the same height as the front one. And because it's on a bit of an angle, we should have cut it 10 mil higher. So we've had to fill this massive gap in here. So I still need to shove some more epoxy in there. Um, did all the screw holes at the back. You remember we put those big long stainless steel screws in. So I still have still have about one or two more goes at epoxy to do. And then straight into the sanding and just start neatening it all up. And if we get all that done by this afternoon, which we should, it shouldn't take too long. Just waiting for that epoxy to go off so we can sand it. If we can get all that done, then it's time to waterproof the inside. Bit to do today, it's gonna to be a bit boring because it's just the same stuff, but it's just time consuming. Day five, it's gonna be, yeah, I'll talk you through it if I'm doing anything different, but at the moment it's pretty much same old, same old. Let's get into it. So I'm just gonna walk you through what I've been doing with this epoxy, because it's not hard, it's just time consuming. And this is what we've been using. It's pretty expensive, this is actually the Best stuff you can get. We were using another brand, but this is the stuff I've picked up recently. West Systems 105 and 206, the slow hardener, and 411 microsphere blend for the coving. And you'll also need plastic spoons. I work, find it works really well because it's got really nice rounded edges on the end. So you can pick them up at Coles or Woolies. Chuck that in there. And a mixing cup, they're called mixing cup. If you're looking for them, you can get them at any any paint shop. I'm just going to do a small batch. So you pour the 105 up to part A of 5 to 1. And then you pour the 206 from A to B. So I'm only going to do a small one because once you add all this stuff, it tends to be a fair bit, bit, of, um, bit of mixture. And also, being it's so muggy and hot today already, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning and it's already ridiculous. Uh, it'll go off quick, so a big batch like that'll be like lots, and I'm only filling in little holes. Gonna do a small batch, it's really hard to get the measurements exact, but 105 to A, 206 to B, and then I'll show you how to mix this in. You need your gloves, because it's some tough stuff, and also eye protective gear. If it gets in your eye, you're pretty much going blind if you don't get to a doctor quick enough. It, it just eats through your eyeballs. These ones, don't buy aloe vera disposable gloves because you can't get them on my hands. You have to put a bit of a bit of baby powder in there. Shake it up. Get the ones that are already powdered. You only need like three or four of these mixing cups because once you use them, they're not completely wasted. Yeah, don't throw them away because once, once you've used them once, you'll notice that there's resin in there. But once it dries, you can just pop that out and that's the leftover resin so and then she's good to go again so she'll be pretty much equal after that pretty tough stuff like solid as you can't break it once it goes past half a centimeter thick so there that's done so we'll use that one what else do you need i think that's about it oh these ice cream containers same sort of thing once you use it you can break the stuff out of it comes out pretty easy so you only need three or four of these as well so we'll get this started part a directly on the line part b get your spoon mix it up so it's all mixed in once it's mixed in pour it in there 
Next step, where's the scissors? I only need to cut a corner off this. Cut the corner off. Just pour it in, pour in what you think. Oh, that's a lot. It's better to go a little bit to the time. Don't do what I just did. I really just want to mix it up. Don't breathe it in either. It's very small, so it'll go straight into your lungs. And I don't think it's good for you. You want to do little bits at a time. Don't do what I just did. But I think I may have just, Yeah, I pretty much just nailed it the first time. That's a fluke because I haven't done that yet. And I've done about 10 batches on my own. And you want it to pretty much stands on itself. So if you can see that, like that's, that's perfect. It's not runny. So that way when then you bog it up, it's not gonna it's not gonna move when you fill the gap. So I like to go a bit more rather than a bit less because the last thing you want to do is come back and bog it again. There you go, that flat line done. I'm just gonna smear some over this crevice here so I can get that smooth later on. Alright as you can see just smeared over that line just in case there was any holes so when I sand it back later it'll be nice and smooth. Filled in that gap that was down there. Look for any more holes. I know there's got some screw holes up here so I'll chuck some in there. Again, a little bit more than necessary because it's easier to sand it off than it is to make another batch. I'm just gonna walk around and see if there's anything else I can fill. Maybe a little bit here. Probably have to do one more batch and just go over everything else now. So these are the ones I did last time, just to fix up the corners, there was massive and all I did was I put plastic either side and then I just filled it up in between the plastics like you can tell with this one. Put plastic either side, just cut bits out of Chinese containers and then filled it up. And then when it dried, the plastic just breaks off. So then it sits really nicely, but then you just have to touch it up with the sander. So I got that to do. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? You're a good girl, you're a good girl. You are. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Hey. You're a good girl. You're molting. Is it summer, is it? Oh, he's a good girl. Just finished for the weekend. Got to drive back down the coast for work, so we're just going to go over what I finished this weekend. Not happy with where I'm finished or how much I got done over the weekend, but this is a slow and painful job if you want your boat looking. Primo. Still not happy with all the corners in the boat. As you can see, like there's air bubbles and stuff that I'll have to fix up. But I've neatened up the, the coving as much as I could with the sandpaper. I still haven't finished that. I've only done front couple and then started on these ones. Taken back the top to where I'm happy with the finish. Like it's all, it's all pretty smooth all along there. There's a few spots that I've highlighted with chalk that I'm going to have to put Find a bit more resin in, fill them up. So I gotta do the corners and fix up these little holes here and there. Like a little one just on there, that one need to be fixed up so I can get all this all looking smooth. Done most of the sides. Yeah, not a whole lot needs to be done with that, but there's a few sections where we'll try and neaten it up so it gives it a nice finish. Not happy with how much goo I've put in the back here. There's gonna be holes and stuff everywhere. So I'm going to load this up with goo, like I've put a lot in there, but we've still got more to put in there, obviously. Tried to... Oh man, that's in my eye. So I tried to neaten that up as much as I could, but they're still, it's still not happy with the finish. So that's going to have to have some more, um, more epoxy put through there. Still have to neat and tidy up underneath. We've also done all the screw holes at the back. 
Still have a lot of sanding and epoxying to do. I thought I'd be a lot further through that than this, like after yesterday and, and this morning. But got to drive down back down the coast for work. Gonna have to keep working on it when I come back up. There's probably another day and a half of just sanding and epoxying left. Then once that's done, then I'll start painting the inside and get that all waterproof. And then start working on the hatches. Can't wait. See you on day six. Guys, welcome back to day six or day seven. I can't remember. We've been sanding this boat for so long. I think it's day six. I've also done extra bits here and there, so it could be up to day seven. Um, I've been sanding all the insides of the boxes and getting them all neat. I still have to vacuum them out. I've got one box to do, which is that one there. And then we're gonna go through and do our final epoxy. Just go through with chalk and mark everything that needs to be touched up. And then, because you don't have a lot of time for when you mix the epoxy to putting it in, so I'm just gonna mark everything with chalk so I know exactly where to go. So we're gonna do that last one on top. And then we're gonna flip her over tonight and fill all the holes in the bottom. Once they're done, then do the final sand and then we can start waterproofing and building the hatches. It has been hectic. I've picked that many um, dust boogers out of my nose, it's not funny. So this is the, yeah, gonna do the last, the final epoxy tonight. And then, then the final sand next week when I come back again, and then we can start waterproofing. So that'll be, that'll be sweet. I bought myself an extra sander because I thought this one was broken. Turns out it's variable speed, and I just accidentally bumped the variable speed on it. So I bought myself an extra one. So then I've been working with two. This one, no joke, lasted about three battery charges, and it just, just stopped working. I was gonna say itself, but. It, yeah, it's it's broken already, so that's going back to the shop. So don't buy an Azito. This one has been an absolute gem, Bosch. You definitely need one if you're going to build the hatches because getting in around all the corners, this has been a lifesaver. This is the last box I've got to do and then kneading up around some of the edges and in there with, um, I've got a file sander that I picked up. So these final little bits in around all the grooves, I'm going to use the final file sander. Um, like in there, see how you got. So you can just lightly run that through there, clean up all in there. Got to do those little corners as well. But one more box to do, and then we're on the home stretch of epoxying and sanding. How exciting! Because this has been the most finicky. I feel like I'm being too much of an, a perfectionist, but kind of want it done right. Just spending the extra time doing it, doing it right the first time. Lots and lots of gaps to fill. Lots and lots of gaps. See you when I finished all that. Forgot to mention, when you're using this one, pick yourself up a heap of these things. I've gone through about five packets already because the corners wear off them really quickly. So you've got to take it really slow on some of the corners just to wear away the huge lumps that you've left. I'm down to my final two after five packets and I think you get about five to a packet. Lots and lots of these things. I'm using an 80 grit. I have a heap, I bought, I bought a heap of 120 grits but I haven't even used them. One box to do and we're on the home stretch. Well guys, just got done for another weekend at Mum's place. We have pretty much done all the bogging and epoxying and that's uh, and coving and everything like that. So that is all ticked off. Next week, I should hopefully just sand her all back and then she'll be ready for waterproofing and building the hatch lids. I'll just show you what I've, what I've quickly done this morning. We flipped it over last night after I did the rest of the top, but I've just like completely smothered all these I've done more than necessary just because I don't want to have to do it again but like even like there's a fair bit of height on these things where's one with a bit of height yeah I've, lo I've loaded it up because they actually sink into the holes a bit I found out last time so over as it's drying it'll sink into that hole and um, so I've loaded them up so that I don't have to re redo them I can just sand them back and they all should be flush this is taking a lot longer than I expected to, to get this part finished. And Jamie will probably tell me it's all for nothing once we fiberglass over the top of the bottom. I'll know it's built well. She's going to be as smooth as a baby's bottom next time. So a lot more sanding to do. Just going to have to sand all this, sand the rest of the sides off. And then waterproofing. So I'm probably going to have to pick up another bucket. I'm down to half a container and I feel like we're going to be using a lot in the waterproofing all through the hatches. There is a lot of surface area to cover in there. You got to do two coats. So yeah, I'm probably going to have to pick up another, another lot of that, which is not good because it's like a hundred bucks. But oh well, things need to be done. I'll start bringing the materials up for the hatches. Probably got half a day of set or 
Probably got uh, like two hours of sanding and probably two hours of waterproofing. So half a day of that. Then we can get onto the hatches. So that should be good. Also got to have to try and work out what sort of rubber seals I'm running. So I'm going to have to be visiting Clark Rubber and a few other rubber places around the Gold Coast this week. Just trying to work that out. Thanks guys. I'll see you day seven. Welcome back guys. It's day seven or eight. Not really sure. Forgot. I have to look over the footage. But we're back up at mum's place to work on the boat. It's Christmas Eve. We are having roast dinner at mum's place, so I'm getting some sanding done. It is about 45 degrees outside, no joke. It is, and it's even hotter in this shed. But we've got to finish off the sanding today so I can flip it over tonight. Uh, I put a lot of bog on last time I was here to make sure that I wouldn't have to re-bog when I got back here. A lot of bog. This is what we're doing now, sanding it with uh, one, no, 80 grit sandpaper and bring it back into absolute smooth. Look at that beautiful so just done that section so far in about 15 minutes i put a lot of bog on so it might take me a while to do these two bits and then these things take no time at all they just come straight off a little bit of sanding to complete and then flip her over sand the insides and then waterproof I, i'm gonna waterproof when it's uh i'm just looking at me like an idiot because i got the camera up to my face gonna sand the rest of this then when someone else turns up flip it back onto the trailer and then sand the inside. I did the, redid some of the corners to make them look really smooth, sand around them, and then waterproof in the cool of the evening because if you mix the resin now, she'll probably go off way too quickly. It's gonna um, do the waterproofing of the hatches this afternoon in the cool. But I'll put, I'll set the camera up and I'll do, I'll make sure I film all the waterproofing, talk you guys through it. But right now it's just sanding, it's pretty simple. Just go over the top of it and get it done. Righto guys, I'll check back in when the bottom's done. Just finished the hull, it was extremely hot, and then blow back it all so I could see it. Can't see any blemishes, which is good. Perfectly smooth, that's what you want it all the way down to. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna have to re-bog. So my theory of just fill it right up so you don't have to re-bog later worked. So I'm just gonna roll it onto its side now. Roll it that side, do this section. There's a few spots that I have to do along these, along the side. So I'm gonna roll it onto one side do that, roll it back onto the other side, do the other side, and then just while I'm doing that, just make sure all the corners have a little bit of a round to them for when we fiberglass the hull. Well guys, finally finished four days of epoxying and sanding, getting it to the stage where, or getting it to the stage of waterproofing. Pretty happy with how it's finished up. You've got to get it looking as nice as you can before you waterproof, because once you do that, then you can't really make it look any more impressive once you've waterproofed it. So spend the days doing that, trying to get it as nice as possible. If you have a look in here, oh, look at that. Absolutely sensational. So when that's all painted and finished, it should look primo. So we're up to the waterproofing stage. We're gonna waterproof all the boxes, starting on the inside ones, so we're not leaning over wet boxes. And including the top, waterproof all the rails. Should take about half an hour each coat, I'm guessing. Keep it as neat as possible, but get as much on there as possible. Hopefully I've got enough stuff. I did pick up a little, a little bit extra, just in case. So we're gonna still use the same stuff as I was using last time with the 206 hardener, but just you don't use the, the white powder. You don't mix that in. So it's just five parts 105, one part 206, and then just start painting her up. And then as soon as you finish the first coat, Jamie said to go straight over onto the second coat. You want it a little bit sticky between coats. So as soon as you finish the first coat, straight back onto the second coat. Righto guys, let's get into it. Once we start, you can't stop until it's done. Just gonna take the leap, start her up. Once you've vacuumed out the insides, grab your five parts cup and you want five parts of this. So pull this up to, oh man, pull that up to part A. Beautiful. Grab your hardener. Pour that up to part B. Done. I need my stirring stick, which I don't have. Stirring stick, stir it up. Till it's all clear. Pull 
pour that in your cup. Open this up. I'm just going to use the big one. You pick these up at Bunnings for like three bucks, oh, five bucks for a packet of three. Empty all that out. Once you use these brushes, they're pretty much cactus. How to lose them. Let's get into it. Starting in the centre. Oh. Paint her on. Start up all the way underneath these things, like make sure you're getting plenty of liquid up underneath your hatches if you're doing hatches. If you're not doing hatches, you'd already be finished by now. This is actually a little bit more tricky than I thought. Getting the but. Thank goodness I started in the middle. This would have been a nightmare if I started on the edges. Right, one hatch done. A little bit more on the bottom there. Make sure you spread it out evenly. So you're not getting too many runs and drips and grabs. You guys don't have to use Greek style. You can use vanilla or anything like that. Greek style was just what we had. One container did those two hatches. That was good. Right, on to the next one. Probably wear gloves and safety glasses too, by the way, guys. Mix it around till it's clear. See how it's milky? Gotta get that all clear. There you go, clear. Pour that into there. And keep going. I like to start in the corners, get as much, jam as much in there as possible. Jam as much in the corners. That way you know you're getting it all done. I found that works best. Jam as much in there. Then work your edges up top. As much along there as possible. Then work your sideboards. Make sure you get as much as possible on top. Anything that's kind of exposed marine ply, like the edges, because that'll just soak it up. Probably do end up doing four coats on that, and then just two coats on the rest of the hatches. Oh, there it is. First coat done. A little over an hour. Looks great. First coat done. Just about to get into our second coat. Got to get into it straight away when it's sticky, and it's feeling pretty sticky. Getting it straight into the second coat. Same as the first coat, so there's not really much to it. Have a look. Looking pretty good. Took us just over an hour to do all these boxes. Now 20. Another hour and we should be done. So that's it for another weekend up at Mum's. We got the two coats on. I was going to show you, but then I stupidly went and put the next board on top to make all the hatches. Here we go. Pretty happy with how it turned out. Solid, it feels as solid as a rock. Uh, there's a few sections that I'm not happy with. Uh, just here's one of them. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's just a little bit thin for my liking. So I'm not sure whether to just paint over that. I'm going to ask Jamie about that, but I'm actually going to try and make the hatches first because there's a few things I've noticed. I just put this board on top when I picked it up from Bunnings, another sheet of 9mm marine ply. This corner's a little high, so it juts it up over the top of... You pull that up there. Oh, there we go. See how it's a little bit too high? So I might have to sand that, sand that down a bit, that corner. So I'm going to do all the adjustments with the hatches first. And if I have to do any sanding underneath, then I'll go back over it and fix any bits up that need to be re 
repainted but all in all I think it's about like 95% done correctly there's just a few spots that I have to fix up also up under I don't know if you can see but up underneath here I noticed there was a gap there's a few gaps around the boat that I want to get fixed up because I don't want any moisture getting in and rotting it out a few spots I want to fix up but I'm going to work on the hatches first also picked up uh, five by five by twelve by twelve mil capping so this will go on top of this section here I've picked up five it's probably too many but they're cheap they're like seven seven bucks each from Bunnings and then I picked up this is nine by nine mil so this will be all the inside of the hatch and it'll fit all in here so that's our next job is to work out how to do that I'll probably do one next time I'm up here and then when I work out how to do it properly then I'll show you how to do the rest excited she's on her way got the just the hatches to build getting real close now getting really excited thanks for watching guys and i'll see you on day nine of the build can't wait to start working on these hatches